Hi, this is Gershon Wolf, and welcome to Modern Music Composition. Um, today we're going to be talking about four species counterpoint. Now, I'm going to be making several different videos on this because there's a lot to talk about, and I want to talk about it in a real stepwise manner so it's easy to follow. Um, essentially, what four species counterpoint is, is it's termed syncopation. What is syncopation? Well, syncopation is a shift in the rhythm where before we, how we talked about the downbeat, which is the first beat of the measure, and then you've got the upbeat, which is the second one. What syncopation does is it shifts that downbeat uh, towards the upbeat. And this is used all the time in all kinds of uh, genres of music. And once again, pop music, rock music, classical, used a lot in pop music. And the reason why is because there's a lot of motion that you feel in pop music. And that motion literally is driving forward. And it's almost like a stick shift. That's the way I think of it. Is you're in first gear and all of a sudden, vroom, you get into second gear. But you feel that a hit forward motion. That's syncopation going on. So, what is going on? <laughs> well... So what happens is you have a shift in the tone and it falls in between uh, the beats of the measure. So what I've written down here actually is uh, here we are once again in, in the uh, G clef and we're in 3-4 time. So there's going to be um, three quarter notes for every uh, measure. I've written a first species counterpoint here actually. Um, didn't color code the top and the bottom. I figured by now I can kind of put this stuff up on top of the board and um, you can follow the two different melodies. Certainly here's the bottom one and the top melody which would be in this case you would consider it your first species counterpoint and the bottom one you could consider the cantus firmus. So notice that in, in blue I've got the intervals. You notice here these are all consonant intervals. Whether they per whether they're perfect or imperfect, they're all consonant. Okay, that's important here. In the second diagram, which is also in three four time, I've written out an analogy to the first one, except I've syncopated it. Okay, I've introduced what's called a tie. Okay. Very important uh, uh, concept in music is, is the tie. And as we go forward in learning our four species counterpoint, you'll see how that tie morphs into a suspension. But we're not there yet. We're just talking about a tie. So what's happening here? All right. Well, we first start off our um, melody with a G. And in our first species counterpoint, well, we're just using the octave. That's actually used quite a bit to start a piece off. Um, here in our syncopated uh, or shifted melody, our shifted counterpoint, um, I introduce, I, I basically break up this um, quarter note into two eighth notes. Okay, in this case, one of those happens to just be a rest. This is just for the first measure. And then the second one is our G. But here's the cool thing. This G now ties over to another G. Okay, and instead of us specifying that we've got a third here, the third is shifted now between the B and the D. So G shifted over here. I've got B to G, so that's B, C, D, E, F, G. That's a six. That's still consonant, using my fingers to do the walking. <laughs> um, and then I follow the same recipe. From our shifted melody, I tie over to another B. And here's our, once again, our cantus firmus, our, our G here, which is right here. So here's the B. 
here's our G, and I've now shifted that E over, but I've tied it, this part over with the D, and then we write our E over here. And so then, sure enough, between, um, whoops, that's, that's erasing. <laughs> hmm, hang on. Let's try this. My backup marker. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> okay, so now we've got a G to an E, there's a sixth. In fact, I'm just gonna let the cat out of the bag. Everything here is gonna be consonant, which isn't gonna be the case for four species syncopated counterpoint with suspensions. But once again, I'm just introducing this step by step. Here we are with um, our E, which is right here, and, and this interval is a six from E to C, but notice we've shifted that C over here, and we've tied that E over to match up with our, um, with our, with our other uh, E beat. Then what we've done is moved over to the next measure, here we've got the um, F right there, so there's your F to A. Here's your F to A right here. Once again, this note has survived over, it's tied over, and then the A is shifted between those two beats. Okay, that's really important to understand, but I hope you're seeing the picture here as it flows across. Just two more to go, and that's going to that's gonna be it. We've got our um, G note here, which is right here. I've had to spread this out because I'm, you know, writing these um, these eighth notes, splitting these quarters into eighths. So just trying to make it legible. Um, where was I? G, G, G to B, G to B, and we're syncopated over from um, or tie, sorry, tied over from uh, A. This A is actually on top of G, but just to make it legible, I put it right next to it. And there we go again. I think these dry out. Um, the last example here we are with the B right here. So B to D, which is the third. Once again, we've, we've tied over the, uh, this B, and then we've got this B to the D there. So the important thing is, is to understand this shifting, it, why are we, why are we doing this, right? Well, this can get boring to listen to. It becomes monotonic. It just, you know, as you're, you know, it's almost like the analogy is, you know, you walk into a room that smells of potpourri, right? Well, you know, 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds into the room, you no longer smell it because you've become accustomed to it. You've got to now go outside breathe fresh air, come back in, and smell that potpourri. Um, that's not, actually, that's a pretty good analogy, and I just thought of it <laughs> just now. Um, the reason why it's good is because you can think of that shifting part as kind of like going outside and coming back in. You've, you, you, you've disrupted the environment, but you haven't tweaked it so much that everything breaks. Okay, that's the important thing here. And that's really the cool part about four species counterpoint. And actually one of the main reasons why I even wanted to include counterpoint in with these lessons is because of four species counterpoint. So it relieves the, this monotonic rhythm and you can think of it as increasing the energy. So you're feeling um, alive again to, to listen to that piece of music and it's making you feel that way. You know, it's, you're feeling motion you're not just sitting still, sitting still, becoming stale. Sitting still, becoming stale. <laughs> okay, so that's it for today's lesson. And what I'm going to do next is now start to introduce um, that tie into what's called a suspension, and that's going to in, that's going to introduce um, some distant dissonances which is going to make it even more inter in interesting to listen to. <laughs> um, 
And so, but I think this is a good explanation of a first step in terms of how you start to think about creating four species counterpoint. So thank you very much and I'll see you soon.